I get lots of requests here from subscribers from India telling me to solve some integrals from the advanced JEE exam. So here's one of them. It's quite a fascinating one. It's the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of x divided by x times sine x plus cosine x all squared dx. And pretty much all JEE integrals have tricks to them. And this one has a very neat one as well. Uh, and it's pretty unexpected as well. So without further delay, we're going to call our integral here i. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to expand the square upstairs and downstairs. So I have the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of x squared divided by the square of x times sine x plus the cosine x dx. And there is never any harm in multiplying by 1. And the fancy version of 1 I want to use here is the square of the sine of x plus the square of the cosine x. So I have in the numerator x squared times the square of the sine of x plus the square of the cosine of x. Which on multiplying out the x squared gives me the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of x squared times the square of the sine of x plus x squared times the square of the cosine of x divided by x times sine x plus cosine x squared dx. And next up I want to add a zero. And what fancy version of zero do I want to add over here? Well this time we have x times sine x cosine x minus x times sine x cosine x. So writing our integral now in this way as the integral from 0 to pi by 4. And let me just give myself some writing space. Yeah, so that won't come in the way. We have x squared times the square of the sine of x plus x times the sine x cosine x term uh, plus x squared times the square of the cosine of x minus x times sine x cosine x dx. So we've... It seems like we've uh, overcomplicated things right now, but trust me, things work out quite nicely with these integrals after applying your bag of tricks, which is fairly simple to be honest. Anyway, now we're going to use the linearity of the integration operator and separate some terms here. So this implies that i equals the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of x squared times the square of the sine of x plus x times sine x cosine x divided by x times sine x plus cosine x all squared dx plus the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of x squared cosine squared x minus x times sine x cosine x dx divided by x sine x minus, oh sorry about that, plus cosine x squared. Okay, so now we have two crazy integrals to evaluate. The first one i sub 1 and the second one I'm going to call i sub 2. And starting off with i sub 1, which we can write as the integral from 0 to pi by 4. And from the numerator, we can factor out this term of x times sine x. So we have x times sine x. And once that's factored out, we're left with x times sine x plus the cosine of x, which is exactly the same expression you have here in the denominator. So you can cancel out one of them. And you're left with x times sine x dx divided by x times sine x plus the cosine of x. Okay, cool. And to further evaluate this, we're just going to use integration by parts, which may, which may not seem obvious at first, but it turns out it simplifies the integral quite nicely. And this is where the actual trickery comes in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to integrate this bad boy here, x times sine x. So let's look for an antiderivative for it first. So the integral of x times sine x using integration by parts, integrating the sine function and differentiating with respect to x, the x function. So we have x times negative cosine x uh, minus, so uh, the two negatives cancel out and we're left with derivative of x being 1. So we have the integral of sine x, uh, sorry about that, cosine x with respect to x and the integral of cosine x is of course sine x. So we have x uh, negative x cosine x plus sine x plus the constant of integration. So that's the integration part done and dusted with, and we're going to differentiate with respect to x the reciprocal of this term here. 
So this implies that I sub 1 in fact equals negative x times cosine x plus sine x and obviously we don't need the constant of integration because this is a definite integral with limits being 0 and pi by 4. And divided by x times sine x plus cosine x. Okay, cool. And all of this stuff uh, minus the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of negative x times cosine x plus sine x and you have to multiply this by the derivative of the reciprocal of this function here. So let's carry out the differentiation. We have the derivative with respect to x of 1 by x times sine x plus cosine x. So this sorts out to um, you're going to have the same thing in the denominator, denominator, but squared, and, and next to the negative sign because of the negative 1 due to the power rule. And now because of the chain rule, I need the derivative of this term as well. So that sorts out to uh, x times cosine x uh, minus, oh, sorry about that, plus sine x. And the derivative of the cosine is, of course, negative sine x. So these two cancel out quite nicely. And you're left with this structure. It's negative x cosine x divided by the very familiar denominator throughout this video. So I wanted to plug this result in up here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And a pair of brackets extra negative cancels out very nicely and we have x times cosine x divided by x sine x plus cosine x all squared dx. Now if you factor out a negative sign from here and that is if you write this as the negative of this integral and of course this positive sign is going to be negated as well okay cool and when you multiply the x times cosine of x with everything you get the negative of the integral from 0 to pi by 4 of x squared times the square of the cosine of x minus x times sine x cosine x divided by again this uh, familiar denominator and speaking of familiar doesn't this entire integral ring a bell and just give me a moment to write this better. Well, not exactly that better, but it's become a recurring theme of my videos where I mentioned that my handwriting is never going to get any better. So there, there you go. That's another example. So look closely at this integral here. Emphasis on the negative sign and your integral i sub 2. Isn't this exactly the same thing? So they cancel out very nicely. And that means i just equals this integration result. So all we have to do is evaluate it. And that means our target integral i equals when you allow x to approach pi by 4, then you get a negative pi by 4 times cosine pi by 4 is 1 by square root 2 plus 1 by square root 2 again divided by, again, pi by 4 1 by square root 2 plus 1 by square root 2. So if you multiply out by 4 times square root 2 upstairs and downstairs, then you're left with uh, 4 minus pi divided by 4 plus pi. So yeah, this was actually pretty fun. I mean, if you ask me to compare it with most of the integrals we do here on the channel, I'd say it's quite different. I won't say it's too easy. It's not exactly too easy. Uh, there's an element of surprise in it, the way the integration by parts evaluated out to a cancellation of integrals. So that was a nice surprise. Will I be doing more JE advanced integrals in the future? Maybe. Maybe. Depends on whether I can find something, again, captivating because, well, you know about the nature of the calculus we do here on the channel. And I want to keep that going for as long as the channel exists. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.